So uh, uh, we have with us right now uh, Mehdi Najari. We're attending the, uh, the the Sightsee Summit here in Victoria, and uh, there's been lots lots said already, of course. But uh, I want to ask Mehdi a couple of questions just on about what what has gone on here. And uh, Mehdi, uh, welcome to the to Thank the you. interview. Now, uh, often we're hearing uh, from participants as well as some of the speakers that. The NDP has made a, a mistake, and that their, their their decision to go ahead with Site C was uh, something they felt uh, really had to happen because of all the economic pressures and other on them. But in in the end, it was a mistake. Now, do you think that what the NDP did and that decision would is that classified as a mistake to you? Uh, no, I believe uh, what he did is intentional. My Mr. Horegon never intended to stop Site C down. Okay. And that is a very important distinction between mistake and doing it intentionally. Okay. Now, the, for example, uh, what could you give me for example? Yes. Uh, let, let, let me tell you this, this way. That the power behind Mr. Horegon, the corporate interests, were pushing the, uh, to build the Site C, and they go along with what their masters tell them to do, dictate. It's not in the public interest. Let me give you four dates in order for us to understand if was this a mistake or intentional. On June 29th, Mr. Horegon was asked to form the government by uh, Lieutenant General. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant General. And then on July 18th, he swore his cabinet, in yeah. a swearing ceremony for his cabinet. On July 21st, 11 days before he referred the issue of Site C to the BC Utility Commission on August 2nd, on July 21st he did something that, uh, that uh, sealed the fate of the Site C that is going to continue. And what he did was this. He appointed the Vice President of BC Hydro in charge of building Site C the man that were promoting the building of the Site C. And what is his uh, job uh, to build? Uh, yes, uh, under Christy Clark, yeah. Mr. Chris O'Reilly, Mr. Horgan promoted him to the presidency of BC Hydro. If you really want to know if the, you know, from the BC Utility Commission, if Site C should go ahead or not, you don't put the man in charge of building and promoting the building of the Site C dam as a president of BC Hydro. I believe that was a signal to the establishment, to the big business interest, that he is going to continue uh, building Site C because he's putting a man that he was in charge of it as a president of BC Hydro. So what Mr. O'Reilly did in a 900-page uh, report from BC Hydro to BC Utility Commission, he uh, mislead the BC Utility Commission by saying, for example, that uh, the BC, uh, Site C is on time and on budget. They knew very well from in the spring of 2017 that is not going to Site C is not going to be on time and on bu on budget. But nobody would, could know that better than the guy in charge of building Site C. Uh, exactly. So when he yeah. when he uh, told the media and BC Utility Commission that it was on, 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 on time and on budget, he was misleading us, yeah. not the public and BC Utility Commission, and Mr. Horgan is okay with that. So Horgan, when he come on December 10th and, 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 and acting like he is really have, well, made a difficult decision, that was all theater. He, yeah. he played with us. When he put that man in charge of BC Hydro before ten, eleven days before U, BC Ut, Utility Commission supposed to to get right. the marching order to look at it, that means the whole process of BC Utility Commission hearings yeah. were all deception from the point of view of Mr. Mr. Horgan. You know, case closed. That's right. You know, when you look at the facts, I'm not giving an opinion. I am just giving you the date and the yeah. facts. And the conclusion is obvious. Now the question would arise, I mean, if enough people understood this, um, do you think that the New Democratic Party could collapse over this uh, issue? No doubt, because there is a difference. When somebody makes a mistake, and now some of the participants in the, in the panel are saying, it, they, they, uh, Horgan made a huge mistake. 
if somebody make mistake, uh, the mistake can be forgiven. Can be the, the, yeah. the person that make mistake can correct themselves. This wasn't a mistake. No. Mr. Horgan is a puppet of corporations, and that's go against everything the NDP supposedly stand for. So this is a group of imposters. Why I call them a group of imposters? Because 41 MLA in NDP, not one of them have an iota of integrity to stand up and say, no, we promise people to be honest with them, to be yeah. true with them, and this is dishonest. Yeah. Not one of them. So NDP only have the power, and Mr. Horgan and his gang have value to the system to, yeah. the, to the establishment, as long as they control that 40, 41 percent of the vote. You know, many it's like this too. You know, when you catch somebody in, in, a, in, in, in some type of a scheme, and, and, and you realize that they're not being completely forthright about their motivations, let's say, and you start to examine the facts like you have done very well here, and that's a very telling sign. But when did it all begin? For instance, uh, it, uh, a year previous to that, um, some people in the NDP, Carol James, for instance, and uh, John Horgan were saying uh, before the election that uh, they would just be sending the question of whether or not to continue on the Site C to the BC Utilities Commission, and they didn't make it a, a, a political issue. But, but they said other things too, uh, Power BC, their, their whole scheme of Power BC, they were also saying that they are going to look at the alternative, that building a dam is uh, being a stock in 1950s. Yeah. So it wasn't just we refer the issue to, to BCUC, they are all also saying that the yeah. alternative wind and solar are important to, 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 to invest in. Now was there any evidence they actually did do that? No, that research. no, they, 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 are, they, they, they were fibbing, they just wanted our vote, and as I said, the value of Mr. Horgan to the system and to the establishment, to the big money interests that control the politics in this province, is that they control about 39 to 41 percent of the vote. And yeah. as long as people are fooled by these imposters and give their vote to them, yeah. they are valuable to the system. Yeah. When people stop voting for them yeah. and kick them out, then we are going to, maybe, we are going to create a new party right. that really represent the, the desire and aspiration and interest of the people of British Columbia. Well, let's just get into that just a little bit. If you were to think, okay, the NDP might implode, there's a chance that that party could fall because of support uh, from the public. It's not going to, it's not going to, they're not going to take themselves apart at the top. What sort of a political party uh, could challenge uh, the right-wing corporate agenda? I believe we need a new political party which has three pillars on it. One, one of the pillars is green. The second is, is the working people of this province, the ordinary citizens, you and me and everybody else that paying our taxes and working and we don't, we want the whole society yeah. improve. Uh, you know, and yeah. we don't want to, you are not, we are not the one percent yeah. and, and people. And the third p pillar is the Aboriginal people. We have to have in our politics a guarantee of the rights of Aboriginal people because until now every one of these liars either is going to be Trudeau or Horegon yeah. or whoever else, they all say they want reconciliation, they want to uh, provide Aboriginal uh, with better, better life and never happen. They, all of them, they betray their promises. So we need a political party that really bring decency to our, to our, to our society yeah. by acknowledging the right of Aboriginal people. This is a real shame. In, yeah. in 2017, still the Aboriginal kids are being treated that way. Aboriginal women is being treated that, that way. Their land is being plundered by yeah. corporations, and we don't want to give it back. Well, you know, it's funny. They, uh, of the, some of the First Nations people I've talked to that have, have really worked through these issues, uh, they say, well, when we get our rights infringed upon, like when, on this issue of the Site C Dam, really most people in British Columbia don't want it. And we, we all feel, oh man, we're, we're really being uh, 
discriminated against and we're not really being listened to and the Aboriginal folks say, well, <laughs> get used to it. We know what that's all about. We have no illusions about this power structure. I, I have, I have, a, I can bring you an article, I have it somewhere, I can give it to you, that Mr. Mr. Um, Campbell, after the election, during the election of 2005, yeah. he promised a new relationship yeah. with, with the Aboriginal people. And then at that time, lots of Aboriginal leaders say, okay, we are hearing nice, nice words, we hope it's become reality. Never happened. Yeah. They, they, they went with the side C decision. That's right. So, Mr. Oregon said he is going to have a, you know, the Aboriginal relation is the number one issue for him. Look at what he did. He betrayed them. And then he stand in front of the press and said, I'm not the first premier that disappoint Aboriginal people. No, you are not. You, you are just continuing the tradition of lying yeah. to, the, to the Aboriginal people. Listen, last Sunday, I was in Thrifty grocery store in Quadra and Mackenzie. I saw Lana Popham. Yeah. I said, oh, Lana Popham. I beg you. So Lana's the MLA uh, for MLA uh, for Saanich South, and also she is the Minister of Agriculture. She is the woman that always say protection of agricultural land, protection of agriculture. I said, Lana Popham, I beg you to resign your position because the side C decision is going to destroy thousands and thousands of acres of agricultural land. And you cannot reside as a, as a minister of agriculture and allow that to happen. And she said, that's not important. That decision is made. That's not important. We have so much agricultural land left. Hmm. These people, yeah. only and only thing that they are concerned about is their position and the money they get. They are all in public prof and they are getting paid well, and they have a wonderful pension that none of us have. 75% of British Columbia have no pension, and these guys that are supposed to represent us have a gold-plated pension. They don't care about anything else. They that lie to get our yeah. vote, and then they do whatever the corpor corporate interests want, their masters want. So people of British Columbia, we have to wake up. This is getting really sad. If we continue allowing these fraud artists to rule over us. I think I had the answer. <laughs> 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 Mr. Jari, come back. <laughs>